So as we get started today this video is divided into chapters. If you wanna skip at any point just look at the sliding bar underneath the plating window and you can see the chapters to skip ahead. Through 2021 we've been working on this sample and now it's time for attaching and doing the final border. That's gonna conclude today's project completely at the end. So we have our project. You have all your squares. If you wanted to change the size you could have easily done that as far as like removing out squares that you didn't like if that if you didn't wanna use it if you wanted to use more of anything. It really it comes down to just being able to put this thing together in the end of the day. So what we have here is that we're going to move then to page number eight and we're gonna cover finishing it here. And it did suggest here that you may wanna block your squares. So blocking means that you're going to just dampen them up and just you can pin them down and create the shape. Um, some people don't block at all. Um, you can take a, a steamer and lightly steam it as well and then just let it air dry and that's something that you can do with all of your, your squares. Now the order that you're going to put it in is honestly it's up to you and it tells you what the square number was in what order that you see in the original sample here. Now it did have different colors if you wanted to play with it to give it that look if you wanted to that's completely up to you. Um, it's your creativity at the end of the day. So you can follow this down and what I would recommend is just lay it out on the table and put the squares in order of what you think it should be. Uh, if you wanna follow exactly the path you can. What I'm gonna recommend to you is that we're going to whip stitch on the back loop only to create an invisible join. And an invisible join you're going to want to use the yarn color that is at least on one side of the square. So for example, say you're joining these two squares, you can either use this color here or you can use this color um, but don't use any other color because then it will be very obvious that you've done that. So when you use at least one of these colors it can be very much hidden in there. So I'm going to demonstrate the whip stitching technique and you'll need a bit of patience. Now some people get really bent out of shape that they are doing um, like sewing but it just means that you're at the end of the project and you're almost at the finish line. So it's that last sprint all the way to the end. Once it's completely joined we are going to cover the border today and get that done and let's go on now and start showing you how to do the whip stitch join and I'm gonna put four squares together just as an example. So once we get ready for the join I want you to make sure that all your squares are turned up so that the right side is facing you. So you can usually tell by the end, see this ridge? This here was the using the back loop as you went all the way around. So you can see it has this lip and that's a great way to do it. And you can also see the other side looks different on the way that the edging looks. So you want to make sure that if you are going to position it in a, in a turned format you can do so uh, because it is technically square after all. So make sure that your squares are all facing up and then we're going to grab enough yarn on our um, on our strand so that we can go all the way across in one in one swoop. So it'll probably be a very long strand if you're attaching all of your squares together in one direction. What I'm recommending to you is that when we go to do this is that you're going to join all in here at the same time. So this, what I mean by that is that you'll start your strand and you'll start going over and go all the way across and go there. Then I want you to get the next set of squares and attach this. And so you're gonna do this all the way across in one motion and then you're going to turn your afghan and then you're going to whip stitch it all across this way. And the way, the reason why I suggest that is that people can turn squares upside down accidentally. So if you just concentrate row by row it's a lot easier. Let's begin. So this is what I'm gonna suggest to you. On the one side of the strand, this is your sewing strand, create a slip knot and leave it open and I'll just leave it there. The other side you're going to wanna put into a tapestry needle and pull through. If this strand is too long on this thing you'll notice that it will get tangled. So don't keep it too long from your tapestry hook. So what I want you to do is coming into the very corner just look for it and come into the back loop only on this side and then I want you to grab the back loop only on the corner of this side. You can always fake it or make it if you're off by one if you're noticing it later on. So you're gonna pull through both of the back loops. Keep this strand here and put the loop around or inside or the tapestry needle inside the loop. And when you pull it, just pull it so it turns tight so it locks onto each other so it will never fall out. And leave this strand here so that it will go on top. So go to the very next strand back loop here and the very next back loop here 
and you're gonna go across. So you'll notice that this strand here matches at least one side. So it'll be pretty much invisible. So going ahead in the back loop and the back loop of this one and you're noticing that I'm going up over top of the straggler. So you only have to do that for about an inch or so and then you can release it keeping it nice and tight. So once in a while just give this uh, sewing strand a little bit of a tug. Don't change the shape of it by over pulling it. So just kind of pull it like this. And once you think you have that strand in long enough just let it rest to the back side. So this is the last time I'm gonna use that. And just toss it to the back side and then carry on. And once, once you get to the end of this section here you're gonna immediately jump to the next section which is where I'll join you in just a few moments. So continue to whip stitch on the back loop only and you can see that because I've used the same color it's pretty much invisible. So please do this and I will see you when these two jump to the next two. So I'm getting closer to the end so what I'm watching for before I jump is to make sure that these kind of guys are lining up. If you feel like if it was really exaggerated like this what you can do is that you can skip one and go to the second over and still continue with the next one of the other one here and that will pull one stitch out of the circulation and you can see you don't even notice it. So that's a way to be able to lengthen or shorten adjusting the edges because ultimately you're going to want to end on the same stitch. So the thing I like to do is that as I'm getting closer I like to make sure that it's really attached to each other. So I'm going to show you a technique and I would do this in both directions meaning that when you turn this and go in the opposite direction here um, that you'll do the same thing. So coming to the very corner I want you to come into the very corner one here and here and we're now ready for the next two. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna show you a technique that I use. I don't even know if it's formal technique or not. It's just something I do because I'm kinda paranoid things are gonna fall out. So before you move on make sure you do give it a tug and you can see that the colors blend in really well. So here this is because um, I buried in that strand so you can kinda see that action going on but if you were using the same color on both sides you would not even notice that. So what I want to do is come to the corner one of this one and I'm going to go directly across to the same corner that I had attached before and I'm gonna bring this one in to the corner here. And then I'm gonna come back to the same corner here and the same corner here. So you can see that I have not only attached it with each other as I'm going but it's also going to be a diagonal attach as well. So it becomes extra, extra strong. So continuing with this one you're going to just carry on with what you already know and you'll end up at the very end of the line when all of the squares in the one direction are attached and that's where I'll pick you up in just a moment. So now coming to the end of the line and I just wanna make sure everything is attached to each other and pulling everything tight because you can't pull it tight later. So now I'm going to turn it to the back side and I'm gonna stay within the one color only so that I don't carry it across to that blue and I'm just going to go directly across. You're noticing that I did not tie it into a knot yet. So it's gonna pull. When I pull it I don't wanna change the shape. So now I'm going to put it into a knot now. So just have it go on top of each other and then back and forth a total of three times within the same section. Stay within the back side of the, of the fiber. So don't you dare put that hook or that needle through the project. So I can feel in the back with my finger that I'm not going all the way through. So don't do that so that you don't change the look. So once you go back and forth a total of three times it should be good. And let's turn it over and take a look. 
it's pretty good. So any kind of imperfections will be solved in the border. So now you're going to go and do all these in sequence all the way up. You're then going to turn your blanket and then do all the remaining going across. How I went across here I would do the same thing. So jumping back and forth do your diagonals and then carry on. So what I'm gonna do for you is let you do that and then we're gonna carry on within the border of this tutorial in just a moment. So I'm gonna put this together off camera and I'll be back in a few moments. So let's cover on doing the border. So what we need to pay attention to the most is the join. This join here you're not gonna use anything with that. So you're going to use the 27 stitches that are across. Don't include the join and then the next 27. So you want to join the corners remember had three single crochets in each. So you're going to use the next stitch and the next stitch and do it two together single crochet in order to pull it together. So the key factor is here is to make sure that there's only 27 stitches uh, in between each of the two together single crochet. Using a five millimeter size H crochet hook or whatever hook you decided to use you're going to start with the very corner of your blanket. So you can use both stitches for there and you're going to attach chain one and in this particular one here you can put in three single crochets because it's the corner. So each one of the very corners of the blanket will have three single crochets in it. And we'll cover when we get back around. So now there should be 27 single crochets in a row. So let's just do that. So one, two, three, 26 and 27. So there's the 27. So the very next stitch you're gonna pick it up, pull through and then you're gonna grab the next stitch over here. So don't grab the one that it's attaching to. Just concentrate on the next one. So it's still part of this, um, the corner. It's just not the middle one. And that's a two together single crochet. So then there will be 27 here before the next time you do that and you'll continue that all the way to the, so, uh, to the end. On the corners then three single crochets and then continue the same idea going across, uh, down and etc. all the way around. So this would be how you would complete the first time around on the edge of the border. Please do this and I will be back in just a moment. When you get all the way back around you are just gonna fill in the stitches. I still have my 27 that I have between the last section here and you're going to just join it to the very beginning single crochet. And now we're gonna pick up from the outside and we're going to um, go along and do the final edge to conclude this series. So let's begin the final border. The nice thing about this final border is that you can improvise if you need to. So if you've changed the size or something is not working out instead of frogging everything and, and getting really frustrated sometimes you have to fake it or make it and this is one of those times. We are going to equally do the same thing all the way around. So even if when you're turning the corners you're still gonna do the same thing. So you're not adding any more extra stitches at this point. So to begin right where we're sitting you're going to chain one. You are going to skip the next single crochet and go to the second one over and you are going to put in three double crochet. So we have one, two and three. Then you're going to chain one skip the next single crochet, slip stitch into the next, chain one, skip the next single crochet and do exactly what I just showed you. So skipping this next one you're going to apply three double crochets. So one, two and three and don't forget to chain one first. Skip the next one, slip stitch, chain one, skip the next single crochet and three double crochet. And you're gonna do that all the way around. So even when you're going uh, like the corners you're still gonna do the same thing. Okay so you're just gonna follow it around and it will have this nice scalloping edge as you do it. So just don't forget you gotta chain one before the single or before the three double crochet and chain one after it and that's the only thing that you really kind of have to pay attention to the most. So um, do this all the way around. This is the second and final round of your blanket. So I'm coming all the way around and you can see that I have some stitch work left over. So I skip one and if I do a slip stitch here then it means that I'm, not, I'm gonna be short. So what I'm gonna do I told you we're gonna fake it or make it and just make it work. So right where I started 
is right where I'm going to conclude. So I'm going to just slip stitch it and pull it together. Okay. So sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. And especially when you're improvising. So remember you know this is your creativity at the end of the day. And if somebody is judging you based on you altering something to make it work for you then they need more in their life to do. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They're too busy mining not minding their business. So what you want to do is take that finishing strand and just weave it on the back side back and forth a total of three times. Okay back and forth. And any loose strands that you have left at this point you're now going to then do the same thing and that you're confident that you buried it enough and that's up to you. So this will be the conclusion of doing this sampler afghan by yarnspirations.com. You may wanna block it so just damp it, just lay it down on a table. But you can see that the border is relatively simple and uh, it's actually pretty awesome. So that's it for today and we hope you have a good one and until next time it's making behalf of the crochet crowd. So with my friends over at yarnspirations.com. We'll see you.